Hallelujah. Uh, just before I share the word of God this morning, I want to recognize and appreciate a friend of mine and uh, uh, minister of the gospel and a friend of this church. His name is uh, Brother James Munene. Would you just greet the church and then I'll share the word. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's appreciate him as he just comes to... Praise the Lord. Amen. It's, a, it's a beautiful morning. And a beautiful gathering of God's people in the house of the Lord. How sweet it is to know that he is present here because he promised he will be as we gather in his presence. I'm excited to be a child of God. My heart is excited. I don't want to say many things. I can only praise the Lord. I can only give him thanks. I can only appreciate his goodness. It's a joy for me to be back here again after a very long time. <laughs> and nice to see the bishop and his family, they are great friends of ours. And to see my friend and my best man. Uh, <laughs> to see him going strong in the Lord is such a sweet thing. I can only say this to all of us. The journey is not over yet. We are not home yet. We are on our way there and let's stand firm and stand first on our way home. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Thank you. I want to bring greetings from my wife and my family that I spoke this morning about 5.30 in the morning, and that was about, I think, about uh, uh, 2 p.m., and they sent their love to you. Do you receive them? Yes. Thank you. I want to take this opportunity to thank Bishop and uh, uh, Pastor, uh, his wife, for giving me, again, the opportunity to share on this wonderful altar. I don't take it for granted because I know altars speak. Amen. And I won't believe that the Lord will help me to deliver the word he has put in my heart this morning. I love to be in this church, and I was almost collecting Pastor Ali, telling her, I am not afraid, I'm a member. Hallelujah. <laughs> I declared that last, last uh, 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 December when he came here, and I hope that he will get the fire and feel me as one of you. Amen. Though I may be absent, but uh, my heart is in this place. We pray for you, we remember you, we shall be here when God gives us the time. And therefore, it's a joy to be back home again in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. I want to share with you uh, the word of the Lord that the Lord has put in my heart. And I believe that the Lord will bless you as we all go together. Uh, and it's going to be on the topic of what you call as uh, wisdom. Someone say wisdom. 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 Because I realize wisdom is very, very important. At my age now, I'm realizing that uh, if, I, if there's anything that I need more and more, is wisdom. And wisdom, and why do I need it more and more? It is because almost everything that we do in life requires wisdom. Uh, if you go to the marketplace, you need wisdom. Ministry, we need wisdom. When you lead or deal with the people like some of us do in ministry, you need the wisdom of God to be able to distinguish how do I lead this person as opposed to the other person. Uh, even in finances, we need the wisdom of God to be able to know and to be good stewards of the resources and the finances that God has entrusted us. When it comes to, to time, all of us have been given 24 hours. Nobody has more than 24 hours a day. And the way you use those 24 hours depends on the application of wisdom that you have and the respect that you have for those 24 hours. Amen. 
Therefore, this morning, I want to share with you on seven laws that you need to, uh, to do to have what I call uncommon success. And I share this because this is the things that I'm doing. This is what has helped me to be who I am, to be where I am, to have the impact that I'm having. As I observe one, one, each one of them at a time, God is helping me to make progress. God is helping me to go to places because God honors wisdom. Hallelujah. The Bible says, the book of Proverbs, chapter 4, verse 7, wisdom is the principal thing or it is the primary thing. Therefore, get wisdom and with all thy understanding get and with all thy getting get understanding hallelujah proverbs 4 verses 7 and i'll be going very quickly so if you're writing notes you can write some of those scriptures down uh, then in the book of Ecclesi ecclesiastes 7 12 the bible says that wisdom uh, is a shelter as money is a shelter but the advantage of wisdom or knowledge is this. Wisdom preserves the life of its possessor. Hallelujah. Amen. So wisdom is a shelter. Money is also shelter. But above all, it says wisdom will preserve the life of the one who has wisdom. Amen. So if you walk in wisdom, if you have wisdom, you have wisdom will preserve you then the book of ecclesiastes 7 verses 9 19 again the bible says wisdom makes one man wise more powerful than 10 rulers in a city wow that is powerful if you are wise you'll be stronger than 10 men or 10 rulers in a city because you become a fault and become an island where everybody is looking for wisdom. And then James says, if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives it liberally or generously to all, the word is everyone, without fault. And it will be given to him. So it is very, very important that uh, we all seek, we all pray, for wisdom. Every morning as I wake up in the morning, I ask the Lord, give me the wisdom to be able to count my days. To be able to put into a place, to, put, to be able to put my life in perspective. To be able to make the right decisions. To be able to give honor where honor is due. To be able to be a blessing to my family, to my children, and the workplace that I'm located in. Hallelujah. And I realize as I soak myself in the desire and hunger for wisdom, the Lord gives it to me that I realize that I make less mistakes. Amen. But when I don't pray, I find everything going haywire. That's why the Bible says, seek wisdom all the time. Amen. So, seven principles because of time. Number one, for you to have uncommon success, it is important to know what we call as the law of difference. The law of difference is the number one that you require to be able to have uncommon success. What does that mean? Romans 12, verses 6 to 8. According to the grace that is given to us, we have different gifts that are working in the body. We have prophecy. We have faith. We have service. We have teaching, we have exhorting, we have giving, and we have leading and showing mercy with cheerfulness. And then he says down there, if you have been given any of those gifts, then you need to exercise them with diligence. Or you need to use them for the glory of God. And the Bible says that we have been given. That means everything that you have in those arena is not from you. It is from the Lord. Therefore, use it diligently. Use it maximally. Use it wisely for the glory of God. Amen. Amen. And when you realize that you've been given that, 
then you are able to design the difference. What makes you different from somebody else? What makes me different from you? I want to submit this morning to you that in each one of you, there is something that, can be, that is only found in you, not anybody else. Hallelujah. Your DNA is different. You are not a copy of nobody else. And that which makes you different creates your reward. Amen. That which makes you or stands up different. Maybe you are short. Maybe you can sing only a certain song. Maybe you have a flat nose like me. It makes you different and you should be happy for who God has made you. Hallelujah. One of my differences is that uh, even in America, I shrub a lot. <laughs> and I have this heavy accent that I enjoy myself. And when I got the first job, everywhere I went and I was talking to them, they would say, excuse me. And I f initially I felt frustrated, but I realized that difference can help me to get them to listen more to me because they're not a studying. Hallelujah. So I used that which was supposed to be weakness as my strength. And instead of giving me two minutes, they give me five minutes. Hallelujah. And the Lord blessed that and I got more results and more productivity because I was able to translate my weakness into strength. Hallelujah. Some of you may think that you are disadvantaged. I want to submit to you this morning. That which you call disadvantage may be the only thing that you can use for as your difference to make an impartation. In the name of Jesus. If you do not know the distinctive difference that is in you, you will never discern what others need from you. That means if, you are, if, you, if I do not know the difference that I am, I will never be able to know what others need from me. When I know that I'm different, when I know that I have that accent, when I know that my DNA is different, then I can be able to know they need me because of my difference. Hallelujah. And your distinctive difference will make you secure in your position. When you know what God has put in you and, when God, and what God has place in your life and who, who you are who you are you become secure hallelujah you don't need to be found by men or women when you know you are secure in christ jesus what are some of those differences we must be able to know number one we must be able to discern the difference in season the biggest problem is when we do not know the seasons of the time when it's time to harvest it's not time to reap. When it's time to move, it's not, it's not time to sit down. The difference in season are very, very important. We must also be able to know the difference in moments. The Bible talks about the blind but myers. He realized that the moment had come for him to have an encounter with Jesus Christ. And he seized on that moment. And he cried out loud and said, Jesus, son of David, have mercy upon me. And because he capitalized on that moment, the Bible says, but Myers was made whole again. Amen. When you know the difference in the moment, and there are moments that you only come in a lifetime, if you don't see that moment, you will miss again. Hallelujah. There is also the difference in opportunities. There are opportunities that God will bring to your life one time in your life. If you miss them, you miss it for good. And that's why we need to be sensitive. We need to hear clearly. We need to be, we, we need to be sensitive to the salad, to the environment. And to, to have our ears, our spiritual ears upright. So that we can sense and capture moments. Hallelujah. I have seen the Lord transform and do things within certain opportunities in my life. And I realized if I missed that, I would have missed it completely. Hallelujah. Amen. Difference in opportunities. Hallelujah. Then, what you call, then we have what you call difference 
in protocol. Difference in protocol. Different people require different treatment and composure. The way you treat bishop is not the way you treat an elder. And I'm not saying that you undermine the elder, but his position requires a higher level of protocol. Are we together? If the president steps here today, this morning, all of us will be studying, will be, will be having a standing ovation. Why? Because he requires that protocol. And the biggest problem I have found in the church is in the inability to know the protocol that God has laid or put within the church. And I will be talking about that down the line. But protocol, when you know the difference that, that are there in protocol, in other words, that, that, that you let with, those protocols will open certain doors for you. Hallelujah. So there are all those kind of difference. I don't have much time to expound on each one of them. There is what you call the difference in values. Basketball in the hands of McJordan is worth $1 million. To you, it may be just a piece of a ball that's not even worth Kenya shillings 100. So we must be able to know who has the value. Who do I connect for values? Who do I connect for my destiny? Who has my million destiny that I need to connect? Hallelujah. All those are what you call the law of difference. And the ability to know the difference that they bring and apply in your life will help you to have uncommon success or uncommon favor. Amen. Amen. Number two is the law of the mind. The law of the mind. Every life battle is a mind battle. Paul writes into the Romans in the book of Romans chapter 12 verses 2. He tells them do not be conformed to this age. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may discern what is good, pleasing, and perfect will of God. If you cannot succeed in your mind, you cannot succeed in life. And when you lose it in the mind, you lose it in life. And our minds are the most important thing in this life. Very, very important. They are more important than the cars we drive. They are more important than the money in the bank. Because it is through the mind we make decisions. It is through the mind that this heart is commanded to act. It is through the mind that the feed is taught, it is time to go and you move. So our minds are very, very important. And that's why we need to, to train our minds to focus. To tame our minds to focus not on everything that's happening, but to focus on those things that are of values and of importance. We must train our minds to receive the right instruction. Because they say garbage in, garbage. What you hear is what comes out of you. So our minds are very important. We must create our we must know that our mind is the cornerstone of our decisions. And therefore, you need to speak to your mind. David spoke to his mind and told him, you have he spoke to his mind and encouraged his mind. There are times this mind, because, because the body is weak, the flesh is weak, it will tell you it is time to go and do something and it's not right. You go to stand up against that and say, you mind, you can't do it. Sometimes you don't want to listen to certain stories and gossip. You go to speak and say, no, you can't do it. We must have control over our mind, the law of the mind. Hallelujah. Number three is the law of recognition. Very important law here. Anything that you fail to recognize will exit your life. Anything that you fail to recognize 
will exit your life. Show people that you appreciate and recognize them. They will stick and stay with you. Recognize the difference that is in people's lives. And they will be a blessing to your life. When you talk about recognize, there are three types of recognitions that are important that have helped me to in this area. Number one, you must be able to recognize your mentors. Because your mentors help you to go to the next level in life. Your mentors will encourage you. Your mentors will add value in your character. Recognize who are your mentors. Everybody needs a mentor. If you do not have a mentor, ask the Lord to give you a mentor. Somebody who can and show you who has walked the walk. You can walk because they have walked the walk. They can challenge you. They can rebuke in life. Mentors. Then you must be able to recognize what we call positioners or connectors. People connect you with your destiny. There are people that God says in our life to connect us to the next level or to position us for the blessing of the next level. And when God brings them around, recognize them and give them honor. Because those are like God's agents sent on assignment to help you to transition from where you are to the next level. Hallelujah. Amen. Wonderful blessings of position us and connect us. Amen. We must also ask the Lord to help us to recognize what we call the parasite, para, parasites. Parasites are people who want to feed on you but leave nothing to you. They, they are there for what you have and not who you are. Yeah. Hallelujah. And there are so many of them. People who are just there to get and not to give. And I have a big problem with this because everybody, no matter whether you are rich or poor, you have something to give. I am a real bit frustrated because sometimes you go, people all that they want is give me, give me, give me. And it will never be enough. And if I realize you're that kind of a person and I recognize you're that kind of person, I put boundaries. Are you together, church? Because if you do not know, the parasites will exploit you and they will and they'll leave you more disappointed than before. So we must be able to recognize that. Then we must also be able to recognize the anointing. The anointing that God has placed over our lives. Because the anointing that you do not recognize and respect cannot be a blessing to you. That's why God has positioned some like bishops other pastors, elders, so that they can be able to speak and to declare the oracles of God in our lives. And when they are declared, we receive those, those declarations with all seriousness and run with it and make a demand because somebody has declared it in the name of Jesus. Amen, church. Amen. The law of recognition. Amen. Number four is what you call the law of two. The law of two. We're waiting. One cannot pry, one cannot multiply by themselves. Adam did not multiply until Eve came to the picture. He was whole. God created him, but he couldn't give birth by himself. God had to make sure that Eve shows up in the picture for there to be multiplication. And when she came in, the Bible says, multiply. And all of us are descendants of that. Amen. The Bible says the book of Ecclesiastes. By the way, that's another area of my strength of not getting this word. <laughs> Missing it all the time. But you know it's good because now you loved. Amen. If you forget anything else, you love that the pastor could not, record, could not be able to pronounce that word. Amen. And for that, you have to remember me. Amen. The Bible says in the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 4, verses 9 and 12, two are better than three hold cord is not easily broken. Hallelujah. One person It is very, very important 
Amen. All right, they want to get on me. <laughs> you see, the law of two says, I mean, the Bible talks about all the time. It says, what two or three shall agree concerning anything, it shall be done. And there is power in numbers. One your shares a thousand, two your shares, ten thousand. Amen. David and Jonathan were in a covenant. And because of the covenant, David arose to the throne, although Jonathan rightly was supposed to be the one to be enthroned. There is power in the covenant. Every time we have agreed with somebody, with my covenant, God comes through and makes a way for us. That's why marriages are fought right and left because the enemy is shaken by the power of two. And every time a wife and a husband are on the same page, let me tell you, no demon from hell or on earth can start that marriage. Because there's that power of agreement. And one person can change your life in 24 hours when you know your covenant. Amen. So we must be able to know about the law of covenant. Who is it that you are connected with? Do you, is this somebody that you can say he's my covenant friend? And you can have as many friends as possible, that's all right. But you need to have a confident who is a covenant partner. Hallelujah. And a covenant partner is somebody that you go just as you are. Just as you are. I have reached that point in time in life that I've realized there's nothing new under the sun. I mean there's nothing new under there. If today I go and I trip and I do something silly, I can go to my covenant and say, Bishop, I have come, I am stupid, I'm a fool, but pray with me. And once I release it, I confess it, God in return gives me strength. Amen. Amen. You know, in the U.S., there's no, we don't have a lot of skeletons because people speak things out. But again, sometimes in foolishness, people get out of trouble. Amen? Anyway, that's another thing. Amen. Number four and five. The law of the place. The law of the place. Location. Location is so important. Places matter. God made places before he made the people. Mm-hmm. God made places before he made the people. He created the earth before he created Adam and Eve. And therefore, location is important. Never stay where God has not assigned you to be. Because when you're in a place where you are not meant to be, your weakness will flourish. And your strength will exit. Are we together? Never stay in a place whereby you have not been assigned to be in. Because that is where your weakness will flourish. And again, when you're in a place whereby you're not supposed to be, no matter what you do, whether you slaughter a hundred goats, guess what? They will never honor you until you're in a place where you're assigned to be. Amen. Never be in a place whereby you are not celebrated. Don't be in a place whereby you're not celebrated. If you go to a place and you're always being put down, and you're always being told how unworthy you are, how stupid you are, it is time to make a move. Hallelujah. There are many people who won't celebrate you. And I tell people, I have come to realize the three things that God has helped me realize, Bishop. When I, when I, when I realized or discovered that I can be able to tell somebody no, I got saved. Because I know it's as good as. So I have no problem telling you no, I can't make it. Because for the longest I've lived a life of trying to please everybody. And I realize no matter how much you do, those who don't agree with you, those who don't believe in you, no matter what you do for them, they'll never agree with you. So I have stopped spending 80% of my time on 20% of people who don't believe with me. And therefore I'm spending 80% on the 20 people who, believe, who agree with me. Hallelujah. So don't be in a place whereby you are not celebrated. Where you are, where you are is important as who you are. Jesus had to leave his home country of Nazareth, his city. 
to go to a place called Capernaum because in Nazareth they couldn't recognize him. And when he went to this Capernaum city, the Bible says miracles started happening. You see, where you're not celebrated, there's no demand. But when you go where you are celebrated, people will appreciate who you are and you have a demand on you and you become useful. Hallelujah. So this is a very important law, the law of difference. Amen. You see, a fish only survives in water. The moment you take it out of the water, no matter whether it is uh, the biggest fish you can ever think of, it will die. Because its place is in the water. And I tell people this, if you are supposed to be in the kingdom, stay in the kingdom. If God has brought you in this church and connected with the destiny of this church, stay in this church. Because the moment you try to do things or to exercise your gifts outside where you are celebrated, they will die. So abide where you are and the Bible says you will be fruitful in the name of Jesus. Remember this, everything that you want in life is somewhere where you're supposed to be planted. And the battle of the seed for the territorial and possession is found in no other place than where you are supposed to be planted. Hallelujah. Number six. Right, is number six? The law of honor. Say honor. honor. Romans 13 verses 7. The Bible says, pay to all what is owed to them. Taxes to whom taxes is, are owed. Revenue to whom revenue is owed, respect to whom respect is owed, and honor to whom honor is. I submit to you this morning, your future is determined by those that you have chosen to honor. Those that you honor have your destiny. I hope you're getting this. They are nothing that you don't honor, no matter how much you try to pretend, it will never be a bless you. In, instead, it will retard you. And there's what you call the code of honor. The code of honor. In life, you must be able to have a code of honor. A code of honor. How do I treat my wife? How do I, do I honor her? Because if I honor my wife, guess what? Everything else will go smooth amen when i go to the restaurant i must honor the waiter because that waiter can kill me or make me leave and some of you who go and you are calling every waiter i let me tell you this morning please don't do it honor them because those people have your life they can go inside there say the food is not good go back there put the food of yesterday you never get to know are you together? So I don't disrespect them. I honor them. And for that reason, I give them a tip so that next time I go there, they'll give me fresh food. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm serious. The watchman who watches over your house, honor them. Because that guy can conspire for you to be knocked off. So honor them. The maid who cooks for you and watches over your children. Don't be too busy. Don't be, don't be too unfair to them. That lady or that house boy takes care of your children. They can do anything to eliminate you. So honor them. Hallelujah. And when you have that code of honor, then life will be easier for you. Hallelujah. Husbands, honor your wife. Wives, honor your husbands. So that, it, so that there is peace in the house. Honoring our children so that they may be well with us. I used to be very strict to my children. God has saved me now. I don't, I'm not over strict. I'm, not that I'm not over strict. But you know, sometimes as fathers, sometimes you're too, are too harsh. And we provoke our children unto anger. Now I realize, you know what? I can sit down with them and talk to them in an honorable manner. The same thing I used to communicate when I'm quarreling, I can communicate them in love. 
and they listen that time. Hallelujah. That's why I said we need to have the code of honor. Hallelujah. If you fail in your life, it can be traced to somebody that you do not honor. The Bible says, honor your parents in the Lord. Honor your father and mother so that you may do what? Live longer. If you do not honor your parents, guess what? No matter what you want to do, you will never open certain doors in your life. And you also will not be honored. So we must honor not only the Lord, but our parents and honor those that have spiritual oversight over our lives. Honor the laws of the Lord. Honor the leaders of the nation. Let's not be criticizing them. Even when they are wrong, our duty is to go before the Lord and pray and say, Lord, help them and bless them with wisdom. So that we can, there can be peace in the Lord. The children of Israel, the Bible says, God told them in the, in, the, in the country of Babylon, pray for the peace of Babylon. So that you can live in peace in that country. So honor is very important. Prison, say prison, prison. is a place for, hmm, this is important. Prison is far, it, if you go to prison, the, most of the people who are there, and I am, and I, most of them, I didn't say all of them, they are men and women who did not honor either the law or the Lord. They did not honor the property of other people. They did not honor the sanctity of life. They did not honor the authorities. And because of not honoring, they find themselves in prison. Amen. So my prayer is that God will help you to be a man of honor in the name of Jesus. Number seven, and I'm done. The law of the seed. The law of the seed. The Bible says the book of Genesis chapter 8 verses 22. As long as the earth endures, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night, will not cease. Hallelujah. In all humility and in the love of Jesus, the law of the seed is not optional. It is not optional. If you do not sow, you don't reap. Amen. And if you reap, you are stealing. So for you to reap a, a, a bumper harvest, you must be able to sow. Now what the Bible says, give and shall be given what? Give and shall be given to you. Back to you. And the Bible says, man shall give back unto. In other words, God will not open the heavens and money will fall on you. No, 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 no. He used man to be the very connectors of the channels of the blessings. Amen. Give, when you give somebody your time, they will also give their time. When you give people or you honor people with your love, invest love to somebody, they will also invest their love back to you. When you give people with the words of encouragement like Barnabas, they will be there when you are, when you are feeling down and cursed. They will be there to encourage you. And that's why seed time is very, very important. I keep looking for opportunities where I can sow a seed. Because every time I sow a seed, whether finances, whether in acts of kindness, whether in words of affirmation, whatever seed I sow, God caused that seed to be a blessing to me in the day of need. The Bible says, cast your Seed in many waters. Your bread in water. I mean, cast your bread in many waters. And in due season, it shall do what? It shall fight it. It's very, very important as a church to be the number one practitioners in the area of sowing. And when you talk about sowing, there's no greater sowing like being able to sow our seeds financially in the body of Christ. And why do I say this? Is because money is the most sensitive thing in the life of a person. Show me your money, I'll show you where your heart is. 
And you can't, you can't talk about uh, somebody without talking about his money. So with this, I leave you with this and say this. It is important for every member of the church to be faithful in the area of our tithes, our seeds, and our offering. Amen. And I make no apologies to say that because I know when you sow your seed, guess what? It shall open your doors. Your seed is the only, is the only bridge to your future. Your seed is the only place that you call forth your future into today. Hallelujah. So my prayer is that God will help you and help me to keep observing all those seven laws. Because when you put them in practice, or at least some of them, if you are doing others, you will have uncommon success for the glory of God. I was sharing somebody, I was telling them, you know what? For the last 30 years, I can remember. One time, things were so difficult. Bishop in the U.S., when he went, I think I've shared that testimony in this church. That literally, we didn't have anything to eat. In fact, we were borrowing money. But during that time, I remember I borrowed money to pay my tithe. I borrowed somebody and say, Dr. Amani say, Dr. Amani, I need you to send me $300. I need to pay this debt. And because of it, God has been faithful. Amen. Hallelujah. We were going south, we are going north in Jesus' name. And we are blessed. And I say we are blessed. Amen. God is not a debtor. When you give to the Lord, when you sow in the ministry, and when you reach widows and orphans that maybe you can't go, but your money can open those doors for you, the Lord will always cause your seasons to be refreshed. We need to have a track record that you can be able to know and keep a journal of remembrance and say, for 30 years in my faithfulness, my area of tithe, I've never lacked anything because God has been my supplier. So that helps you not to scatter your seed. Whatever you give, I always tell people, give, keep a record of what you're giving because you need to be able to give a testimony when the Lord comes for you. And for 30 years, God has helped by the grace of God. We have been faithful in that area. Even when I didn't have, I borrowed to give my tithe. And because of it, today, the Lord is more than gracious. Amen. 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 Let's close our eyes and pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word this morning. Lord, I delivered your word as you give it to me. And I pray that this word, Lord, will be a pillar. A pillar to somebody who was uh, struggling in one area or another. Maybe it could be the area of honor. It could be the area of agreement, Lord. It may be, Lord, in the area of seed time. Lord, maybe an area of uh, uh, any area that I've shared this morning. I pray that in the name of Jesus, you will strengthen each one of us that are here this morning. Lord, I pray that nobody in this church, nobody in this church, Lord, will be a victim of the deception of the enemy. But God Almighty, you help us to be, to plant ourselves where you have called us to be so that we can be of maximum benefit to the body of Christ, to this nation, and to the world at large. And even as I make this prayer this morning, some of you this morning that are here, and God has challenged you, or God has quickened your spirit in one area or another in some of those things I've shared. Maybe you find yourself connected with the wrong people. People don't add value in your life. And when you look at your life, things are going from bad to worse just because of the people you surround yourself with. Others is the law of the mind. You allow your mind to be polluted. You allow every junk to come into your mind. And the Bible says we need to be transformed, to be renewed in our minds. Maybe it could be the area of uh, probably the law of difference. You're so talented, you're so blessed. But you're always comparing yourself with somebody else. And because of that comparison, you fail to appreciate that which God has planted in you this morning. Maybe there's a talent that God has put in your heart. And you have not been able to tap that talent. And because you've not done it, you have not been able to tap into the fullness of God. Very quickly, as I finish the service, if you're there, you'd like me to pray for you. Just lift up your hand, wherever you are, and I'll pray. May the Lord bless you. Wherever you are, may the Lord bless you. Wherever you are, that God may be able, by the, by the, that the Spirit of the Lord may quicken you to be able to start putting those broken pieces together. And let the Lord cause his reign of remembrance 
causes rain of connection fall upon you in the name of Jesus. Father, in Jesus' name, thank you, Lord, for these hearts that have been lifted up to you. Lord, these people are lifting up their hearts to you, not to me, because they need you and they know the area of need. And this morning, as your servant, as I stand on this altar where declarations have been made, Lord, where restoration has taken place, where miracles have taken place, where salvation has taken place, I pray that the fire of this altar, Lord, will burn in their life this morning. That God, you may connect them with their destinies. That, Father, you help them to understand and to know that they are wonderfully and fearfully created and that they have a place in the work of the Lord. Lord, I pray that none of them will ever despise themselves, oh God. They will not allow to be defined, not allow themselves to be defined by today because they are works in progress. They may not have realized or seen the potential that is in them, Lord. And in Jesus' name, I'm calling out the gifts that is locked up in each one of them, oh God. Some of them are supposed to be great musicians. Others, Father, are supposed to be great managers. Lord, others are doctors. Others are like Esther, who was an orphan, yet you promoted her to be the queen. Others, Lord, may be like Ruth, who was a Moabite, born outside the lineage of Jesus. But God, because your hand was upon her, you made her to be a great, great grandmother of Jesus Christ. I pray, Heavenly Father, those that are here this morning, preserve them, love them, Jesus. Love them with a just love, oh God. And help them to realize that you have a, a destiny and agenda for each one of them in the name of the Lord. If you're here this morning and maybe you're not saved, I'd like to give you the key of meeting Jesus. Maybe you're, not, you're here not saved. and like to give your life to the Lord. Very quickly, would you lift up your hand as I pray for you this morning. You're not saved in this church. You're not saved. Just lift your hand wherever you are. I'll see it. And the Lord will bless you. Are you here this morning? You're not saved. Anybody? May the Lord bless you. God bless you.